place than I am an outsider, a stranger in this century and among those who are still men. This I have known ever since I first looked in a mirror and saw an abomination staring back at me. Let me just thank you for sitting down with us today. It's no problem. You promised me absolute anonymity. Of course, is, um, is that why you're wearing that mask? <laughs> Something like that. I see. Well, whatever makes you happy. For the purposes of the tape, what should I call you? Call me... Strange. Samuel Strange. Seems appropriate, wouldn't you say? Well, this is a very strange case. What can you tell me about the murder? Well, very little, I'm afraid. I've just moved here myself. But you are aware that a body has been found. Several. I'm... I'm sorry? It wasn't a body they found in the cellar under my property. It was several bodies. What newspaper did you say you were from again? It's, um... Well, it's, it's not a newspaper, it's... An online blog. You know, similar to BuzzFeed. Not as large, obviously, but regardless, I'm sure your readers will want to know all the facts. Uh, aren't you going to write any of this down? Oh, of course. You said it was several bodies. Did you know any of the victims personally? Like I've already told you. I've not lived here long. And where did you live before? Somewhere else. Oh, I, I'm sorry, it, it looks like you're squinting. Would you like me to turn on more lights? <laughs> it is very dark in here. That's just how I like it. Um, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> so, what can you tell me about the murders? Unhappy is he. Who remembers a childhood filled only with fear and sadness. Wretched is he who looks back upon those dismal days and dares to smile. But smile I must, but if not I would cry, if I even knew how to. There's an emptiness within me, a void. I have fingers, and yet I cannot feel. I have eyes, and yet I cannot see. I have ears, and yet I do not hear. I am in darkness and ignorant to everything around me. I have never known what it would be like to walk in a world outside of my own. I am kept here in this darkness by a fear of the outside world. The outside world is terrifying, and I am an outsider. I don't belong out there. Also, my mother used to tell me. The world is a cruel and unforgiving place. And you have a twisted and unattractive face. She is dead now. Wretched is he who looks back upon that night and dares to smile. I had been killing the rats for years. It seemed only natural that I would kill my mother. Inevitable, perhaps. 
I was a curious child. Fascinated, really. My mother looked so different to me. She had strange lumps where I only have a flat chest. Between her legs was something exotic, strange, mystifying, compared to the shriveled piece of meat caged in my underpants. Does that amuse you? Consider a child, nay, a man, with that kind of curiosity, and you'll imagine what then came to pass. I never knew the touch, the kiss, the embrace of a woman until that night. She was reluctant at first when I tried to put my hands upon her, so I simply clamped my other hand around her neck to silence her, you understand. When I was finished, my mother remained still, as silent as the grave. Appropriate, really, considering she was dead. But I'll never leave you, my child. I was born in this infinitely old and infinitely horrible place. For decades I have crawled through its dark passages, with only spiders and shadows for company. There is an accursed smell everywhere, like piled up corpses of the dead. There has never been light. There has been only darkness. I used to sometimes light candles and gaze steadily at them for relief. But I ran out of candles years ago. How fortunate I stumbled upon this. What is it called? That is a torch, child. A torch. Of course. Thank you, mother. I must have lived for decades in this place. But I cannot measure the time. Beings must have cared for my needs after my mother was murdered. After mother died. Yet I cannot recall any person except myself. Or anything alive but the noiseless rats and spiders. Though I consider myself a mockery of a human being. There is nothing grotesque about this place. I find the mold that grows on its walls, the blood that has long since dried, and the stench of death somewhat beautiful. I fantastically associate these things with everyday life, and find them more natural than the coloured pictures of living beings which I found in many mouldy books. From such books I learned all that I know now, how to hate how to love, and how to dream. No teacher urged or guided me, and I do not recall ever hearing any human voice, not even my own. For although I could speak, I had never thought to try to speak aloud. That all changed on this particular day, when I heard what sounded like a young man. His name? as I would later find out, was Sebastian. I had never seemingly heard human speech before, and could only guess vaguely what was said. Yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, just got some work to do today. <laughs> yes, that old chestnut. Still working on it. How's Miranda? Good. Good. No, I don't need any company. Yes, I'm sure. Well, 
I think I hear someone at the door. Oh. No. I think I hear someone at the door. I have to call you back. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. No new horror can be more terrible than the daily torture of the commonplace. Work to be done. Bye. Do you hear that, mother? This young man is suffering. He is in pain. I'm not alone after all. Do you even know what suffering is, child? Suffering is... Suffering is... I am reminded of Frankenstein. Yes, of the creature. I have a copy of it around here somewhere. I must remind myself of the creature's agony. Maybe then I can understand this young man. Where is it, mother? Perhaps amongst these other queer texts, child. My mother pointed to a table upon which once stood a pile of books, hoary and mouldy. I would often lie and dream for hours about what I read in the books and would lovingly picture myself amidst gay crowds in the sunny world beyond this endless darkness. I tried to escape once, but as I crossed the threshold of what has been my home all of my life, I felt a sudden brooding fear. So I ran frantically back into the darkness, lest I lose my way in a labyrinth of nighted silence. Returning to the table, there was only one book now, the unmentionable Necronomicon, written in a forbidden Latin translation. A book which I had never seen, but of which I had heard monstrous things whispered. That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange aeons even in death may die. It is said this book can raise the dead, something I did not wish to put to the test. It was then that I heard his voice again. Hello? Is there someone in there? Hello? Outsider too, outsider too, outsider and I long to be I there, long to I be there, there. You. I with you. With you. Hello. Yes, Thomas. I'm fine. Listen, listen. Do you know what that door under the house is? No, I was taking the rubbish out, right, and I noticed there's a door that leads under the... Yes, but I haven't got a key. Yes, I'm sure. No, it's not mentioned in my lease. Because I read the lease. No, listen. 
fine. I'll look it up. I don't know, something... I thought I heard something when I was outside. Yes, probably nothing. I know. Yes. <laughs> yes, same old Sebastian. Jumping in shadows. Any loud noises. No, I don't want company. No. I'll check the lease and I'll... Yes. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye, I guess. Who could have known that above me is a creature as tortured as I am? I am loath to say it, but this must be fate. What are you talking about, child? That man, Sebastian, he must be as hideous as I am. How could you possibly know this, child? His words are dripping with longing, with desire. He reminds me of... me. Sebastian is handsome, child. You are a monster. Thank you for reminding me. Do you remember the first time I showed you your reflection in a mirror, child? Tell me of what you saw. I beheld in full frightful vividness an inconceivable, indescribable, and unmentionable monstrosity. A compound of all that is unclean, uncanny, unwelcome, abnormal, and detestable. It was a ghoulish shade of decay, antiquity, and desolation. Putrid. Not of this world, or no longer of this world. Yet, to my horror, I saw in its eaten away and bone-revealing outlines a leading, abhorrent travesty on the human shape. And in its mouldy, disintegrating apparel, an unspeakable quality that chilled me to the bone. It was... I am... Ugliness personified. Ugliness personified. But then, Sebastian will be a nice contradiction to my hideousness. Perhaps he will take pity on me. Yes, I, I'm sure he will. He has kindness in his voice. I'm sure we will be friends. Lovers, even. He desires companionship. I could be that companion. That would be an abomination, child. You must stay here in the darkness. But why? Do I not deserve happiness? Do I not deserve to see the sun just one time in my cursed existence? Think carefully, child. The outside world is a very different place. Their ways are not your ways. Sebastian can educate me in their ways. Think carefully, child. I shall, mother. I shall. Coffee. No. No, thank you. It's no problem. I can ask my assistant to... Why... Why are you telling me all of this? You wanted to know about the murders, did you not? I'm just giving you what you asked for. Then get to the murders. That's what I want to know about, not this HP Lovecraft Phantom of the Opera shit. You know 
soon enough. When? You know, soon enough. Are you sure I can't tempt you with some coffee? Oh, I better not with that shit. If you want to live to see tomorrow, Mr. Journalist, then I suggest you sit the fuck down and listen to what I have to say. I'm listening. Good. Now, where was I? Sebastian. 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 Thomas, listen, me again. Um, I can't find any records of the previous people who lived here. No, I've looked. Yes. Well, I, I haven't got the lease anymore. Well, I don't know, threw it out. Listen, um, you know the chap at the council. What's his name? Yeah, him. Why don't you phone them for me? And because I'm busy, that's why. Listen, phone them for me and just uh, just ask who lived here before I did. Yes, I know it's probably nothing. Because it's weird, that's why. Just, I don't ask for very much. Just do this for me. Please. Th thank you. I'll speak to you later. Through endless twilights I dreamed and waited, though I knew not what I waited for. Then in my shadowy solitude, my longing for light to meet Sebastian grew so frantic that I could rest no more. At last I resolved to leave this darkness and venture into the world beyond. What if I crumble to dust in the rays of the sun? Though I might, I thought it was better to glimpse the sky and perish than to live without ever beholding day. So, your mind is made, child. I only wait because you asked me to, but I cannot wait any longer. Are you so eager to meet your Sebastian? What if he rejects you? We are the same, he and I. We both want the same thing. To be loved. What is love, child? I have... I have read of it. Now I must go and find it, Mother. I am not your mother, child. I never have been. Then who are you? I am what you may call an old one. And what exactly is an old one? Man is neither the oldest or the last of Earth's masters. The old ones were the old ones are, and the old ones shall be. We walk in fantasy and in reality. We are unseen. No one can behold us as we tread. We inhabit the past, present, and future. The wind is formed from our voices and the earth mutters with our consciousness. We bend the forest and crush the city, yet may not forest or city behold the hand that smites them. 
The Great Cthulhu is our cousin. Cthulhu. Fear not, child. He will not rule your puny world for centuries. Now go. Your time in darkness is over. Be free. Live. Kill. Create. Do as you will. Thank you. Old one, you were an outsider too. Outsider too. And I long to be I there. To be there. To be there. So, Some time must have passed before I reached what seemed to be my goal. A curious apartment inside a strange stone building. Maddeningly familiar, yet full of perplexing strangeness to me. What I observed with chief interest and delight was an open door. Advancing through it, I found myself in a queer hallway with odd shapes in the darkness. Where was the light? How had I fled from one darkness and found another? Where is the light I was promised? Yes. What? No, I, I... Say that again? Who used to live here? Well, yes, I saw it on the news when it happened, yes. Yeah, lived here with his mother or something. He what? in an institution. No, I didn't know that. And he... He escaped. Well... That's... That's it. I'm changing fucking locks, that's what I'm doing. No, I'm not overreacting. 
How can you call me and tell me that some nutcase used to live here, got locked up and then escaped, and yet you're telling me not to change the locks? I'm not being paranoid. I, I definitely heard something earlier on. Do not listen to me coming from the fucking door below the house. No, I don't care if you couldn't get through to the council. I don't care what it is, I'm, I'm changing the locks. Yes, of course I know what time it is, it's... Well, it's ten past six. Fine. Fine, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, thank you very fucking much for this information. How the hell am I supposed to sleep tonight? No, for the last time, I don't want company. It'll be fine. Fine. Goodbye. Sebastian. Hello? Someone there? <laughs> oh, it begins. Oh, it begins. Sebastian. Hello? Someone there. Hello. <coughs> Thomas, I swear to God, if this is you, I do I not have a name. Call me what you will. And you are Sebastian, yes? Hello? I swear if someone's here, I'm not going to be happy. Maybe the house is fucking haunted. Unhappy is he who remembers a childhood filled only with fear and sadness. Wretched is he who looks back upon those dismal days and dares to smile. But smile I must, but if not I would cry, if I even knew how to do. There's an emptiness within me. A void. No! <laughs> oh, Sebastian. You're classic. Oh. Back to work. We should be friends. We should be friends. Forever. I stood in this brilliant apartment alone and dazed. I suddenly trembled at the thought of what might be lurking near me unseen. But there was nothing. And no one else here. Just this monster and his latest victim. Hello. Ah, uh, Thomas. No. No, everything's fine now. Just me overreacting. So I, um... 
I looked into that chap. You know, the one who used to live here. Yes, so he did kill his mother. Never found her body. That's what he was caught for. I don't know. I have no idea how he managed to escape. Some absent-minded prison officer or some bollocks. No, no. I'm sure he's long gone by now. Yes, I'm sure. I was just... You know what I'm like. <laughs> Living under the house. <laughs> oh. You don't think he is, do you? No, I'm just kidding. <sighs> yes. Yes, I'm sure. Like I said, I'm sure he's long gone. I'm sure that's the last he'll be heard of. Wait, wait a minute, Thomas. No, wait, wait! No mind. Yeah, I thought I heard something. It's fine. Anyway, tell Miranda I said hi. You too, my friend. Bye. I have been killing the rats for years. It seemed very natural that I would kill Sebastian. Inevitable. Perhaps. There is a way to resurrect him, Charles. Do you remember? The Necronomicon. Could it work? But be warned. Sebastian will be a lifeless husk. A ghoul without a soul. Are you prepared for that? Will he be my friend? He will obey you. Step closer! Fucking warning you! I don't understand. I I only wanted to introduce myself, Sebastian. I have been listening to you for quite some time. I said stay back! I'm just going to call the police and I'm going to let them take care of this. Now you just you just stay where the fuck you are. I only wanted to introduce myself. I hope that we can be... I hope that we can be friends. I'm warning you! Please, don't make me use this. Don't make me use this! There's no need for that, friend. I'm... 
I'm not a violent man. I, I never had to deal with an intruder before. Or whatever the fuck you are. Very well. I am a fucking intruder. And you are Sebastian, yes? Please, just don't make this harder than it already is. Just stay back. I have dreamt of this moment for so long. We are the same, you and I. We both crave affection. I'm sure we can get you the help that you need. That's right. I know all about you. I, I, I know what happened with your mother. Please, don't make any more mistakes. Just, please, just, just stay back. Don't you hear what I'm saying? We're the same. You want a lover, as do I. Please, just, just stay back. I promise I'll, I'll see that you get the help that you need. You, you have my word. I, I, I never break my word. I'm not sick, Sebastian. I am lonely. Please. Please, don't make me use this. We should be friends. Please. We should be friends forever. Please. Uh, uh, no. Stop! Please, I'm begging. you listen to me? Uh, why? Service. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. My name. My. Sorry. Yes. My name is Sebastian Strange. Yes, that's S T R A N G E. Please hurry. If I am mad, it is mercy. May the gods pity the man who in his callousness can remain sane to the hideous end. I know always that I am an outsider, a stranger in this century, and among those who are still men. This I have known ever since I first looked in a mirror. 
and saw an abomination staring back at me. Now, it is up to you, my friend. Tell the world or burn the footage you have. Wait just a minute. You don't honestly expect me to believe a single word you just said, do you? I have not told you a single lie. But you haven't fucking told me anything. What actually happened that night? Who the hell are the old ones? What's this? Necronomicon. It is absolutely necessary for the peace and safety of mankind that some of Earth's dark, dead corners and unplumbed depths be let alone, lest sleeping abnormalities wake to resurgent life and blasphemously surviving nightmares squirm and splash out of their black lairs to newer and wider conquests. Oh, Fang. Then at least answer me this. What became of this outsider? And what was with the name change? You said your name was Samuel. I always preferred Samuel to Sebastian. As for the outsider, well, let's just say hypothetically that I might, with a little help from the Necronomicon and the Old Ones, have managed to resurrect the outsider in a ritual chamber under this very house. Maybe now he is a slave to me, a ghoul, a creature, a thing. Well, <laughs> that's a relief. I, um, don't suppose I could ask him some questions. Go ahead. He's right behind you, after all. What the, the fuck was that? Strange. Strange. Strange, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown.